worship in spirit and in truth. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. Oh, sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever and for the life that's been reborn his love endures forever sing praise sing praise oh 
sing praise, sing praise, sing it out. Oh, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. From the rising to the setting sun, his love endures forever. And by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Oh, sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. Sing it again. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever and ever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. 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 Sing praise. Sing praise. Oh, sing praise. Oh, sing praise. Ever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us, forever. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. Forever God is with us, forever and ever and ever. So I wait for you, so I wait for you, falling, falling on my knees, covering all of me, for Jesus, you're all this heart is living.
so I wait for you. So I wait for you. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Jesus, show all this heart is living for. So I wait, so I wait for you, so I wait for you, falling on my knees, offering all of me, Jesus, you're all this heart is living. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Jesus, your all this heart is living for. Oh, Jesus, your all this heart is living for. Praise the Lord. Yes, give him a clap offering. We praise you, Father. You are worthy. You can be seated if you like. That's even better. Sorry. <laughs> I've been known to scare people, but not like that. <laughs> Good morning. All right. We don't even have to do jumping jacks. <clears throat> but we can do this. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for worship. We thank you for reflection. We thank you for the fact that we serve such a mighty God. And Lord, we sing because, Lord, you are in our lives. We sing because, Lord, you have revealed yourself to us in so many ways. We sing because, Lord, we can trust you, we know you, and we worship you and give you glory for our salvation. And, Lord, allow us, as we come before you this morning, allow us to hear from you by your Spirit through your Word. May your Spirit teach us, may your Spirit convict us, encourage us, and lead us, and give us even further direction as we go from this room, from this facility, out to the world once again. That, Lord, we may be equipped with something. That we may be equipped with, with even more so wherewithal. That, God, we have a job to do. And, Lord, we want to do it to the best of our ability and for your glory. So, Lord, we open up your word today. We invite you in this room, in our hearts, in our lives, in this Bible study. And may, Lord, we just in every way walk away 
with the ability to apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The, uh, the last few weeks in Colossians, um, we have touched lightly. I mean, really, we have touched lightly on our Christian duties. The instruction from the word and all the roles that we've played, all the roles that we will play, all the, all the things that life will take us and all the places where life will take us, all the roles that we will, in, in many respects, know this. God's not done with us. And God has not left up us as orphans without any direction. He's given us his word. And it's such a blessing to know that. We have roles as sons and daughters of God. We're not left as orphans. We have an owner's manual. It's right here. And that's the whole part where we draw comfort from this aspect. It's such a blessing to draw from, how do I be a man of God? How do I be a husband? How do I be a wife? How do I be a boss? How do I be an employee? How do I have patience? How do I have all of these attributes that only God can give? And it's me allowing him to teach me and show me. In an instruction book, an owner's manual, there's always this one chapter called troubleshooting. <laughs> you don't go to that unless, you know, you've done everything else. Then you're like, well, maybe, maybe I'll go to troubleshooting and figure out really what's going on here. And so that's the thing. It, most folks never browse there until, until we do. And there's things in our Christian life because it's not something to randomly study unless we need to. And as we've been just lightly touching these things of our roles and our responsibilities and uh, the positions that God has put us, and when something is broke, we pay attention. And we study how to fix it. And, and we, as we've touched on it lightly about wives, about husbands, about children, about employees and all these things, uh, it's, it's all specific. These are specific roles and specific duties that we want to do well for our Lord, that we want to be the best that we can be. All these things and all these roles and all these duties on living them out for the world to see. I don't want to be a walking contradiction. Although at times I am. You don't want to be a walking contradiction. That sometimes you are. But it's the thing that we have. With the relationship with the Lord. Is that he convicts us. He nudges us. He shows us. Or some loving brother or sister. Will be glad to tell you. You're a walking contradiction. <laughs> if the spirit is right. That's not a problem. If it's done in love, if it's done with poise, if it's done because it's been prayed about, that's a whole nother thing. But in all these things and all these duties and all the stuff that, that we just went through, again, each one is a long Bible study. Each one is, is, if it's a troubleshooting issue, you can find so much on how to be a good husband. You can find so much, I mean, all over the word examples played out to really say okay this is what I can do by application of his word and these are where the changes always start when his word goes from here to here that's what empowers us that's what gives us the ability to discern a lot of things that's what helps us to say no I've been down that mistaken path three times and now I've kind of got it figured out because his word does prove true So as we study our Bibles, as we are in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, that's where we're left, we left off last week. I just want to touch on this word. Whatever you do, do it heartily to the Lord and not to men. 
knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. So this is the thing. Whatever you do in all these roles, in all the application of these roles, when you find yourself in this role or that role, because our roles have changed, do it all for the glory of God and for no other reason. We want to live out Jesus for the world to see. And we want to do it not for our own glory, because you know where you came from. You know what you were before you found Christ. It's all been him doing it ever since. But you want to do it. You want to live your life for the glory of God and not for the glory of yourself. When it says heartily, obey from the heart, that's what it means. Whatever you do, do it heartily. You, you go back, it's, it's, it's automatic like breathing. It's from the heart. It's the source of conduct as to be found in the state of the soul and its feelings and virtues. And it's a two-linked, uh, deep word. It's, it's linked together, it's layered, it's complex because it's the human soul in so far as it is constituted by the right use of of aids offered it by God and it can attain a highest its highest end and secure eternal blessedness the soul regarded as a moral being designed for everlasting life as we apply all the things that he gives us his word touches our soul, changes our soul, encourages us. His word feeds us, strengthens us, and gives us so much ability as we put this thing like breathing right from the heart. And whatever you do, do it because you've spent a lot of time in his word, not just a lot of time in his word. Head knowledge is great, but it's application of his word is where you gain wisdom. So this is the whole thing. It's a process that, that's a lifetime. And it's, it's an exciting adventure. It's exciting to grow in Christ. It's exciting. It's, 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 uh, there's nothing like being used by the Lord. There's nothing like sharing the gospel. There's nothing like praying with somebody or just being that source of encouragement to make somebody's day or to pull them a little bit farther because they can't take another step. And you can because you've shown up. So this is the simplicity of it. Whatever you do, do it heartily for the Lord. Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. So in that heart-led behavior, we read our owner's manual. And when we have issues in our roles and in our duties... We study in depth of how to overcome. We are, in many respects, have the ability to overcome sin. Not that I will one day, here's my perfect day, you know. But I know that I'm not the same person. And I hope that you can say the th same thing. You're not the same person you was five years ago. Because the owner's manual, the word of God, has changed your inner man has given you even more withal and wherewithal to engage a world around us in an effective manner. It's what to do. To check the boxes, to dig deep into the descriptions on how to be a dad. The descriptions on how to be a mom, to be a wife. And as we do that, we want to make it right. We want to move forward. Have you ever made a mistake? <laughs> I mean, some of us have made very few of them. <laughs> I didn't put me in there, did I? You guys assumed. Okay. Yeah, we all have messed up. We all have like, wow. I overreacted here, and now I know why. I haven't been, you know, it, it, it's always an ingredient that's missing. We want to move forward as believers in the roles that we have. We want to get better at them, and we can't do it without letting God help us. 
We want to grow in knowledge. We want to perform our duties and our roles for the glory of God, and we want to do it wholeheartedly, heartedly, to be effective for the kingdom of God. You know, because this has always been the mandate, this has always been the thing, is nothing has ever changed. We are to go into all the world. That is my ministry and yours. I repeat it all the time, but I can't not repeat it all the time. And preach the gospel and make disciples. And when we do that, this is how the church goes forward. This is how the church grows. It doesn't grow from, I'm mad at them across the street, so I'm going to go over here. That's not church growth. Church growth is... I'm going across the street to my unbelieving neighbor and bringing them a cup of sugar. I'm investing in this person because I know that as I have a conversation seasoned with grace, seasoned because I spent time with God, and the ability of like, hey, Jesus loves you. And the reason you're listening to me is because I haven't told you this for six months because I have redeemed the time so that I could earn this thing for you to ask me, How much does he love me because I see your life? All of this is still this, to further the kingdom. It's it's that. It's being that person, and it's the easiest thing. We can make it very complicated. It's just easy. We want to be effective. And we have such resources to be effective. Because in the Christian life, it's the long game. It's the long game. It's the long game with your family members. It's the long game with your coworkers. It's the long game in, in from even your children. The patriarch, the matriarch. It's the long game because we are in a marathon race we have valleys we have hills we have curves we have cliffs to look out for we have rocks we have traps all of these things it's the long game and the thing is as we realize the more we know the more we grow he equips us on all levels on all levels He teaches us, he teaches us this, how to trust him. You trust him unto salvation, and he does an amazing work in your life and your heart. But I don't trust him because I lost my job. I'm locked in fear. He's going to show you that your first reaction for three days was not trusting him and freaking out. Then when you prayed, because you had nowhere else to go, he showed you something. He can't be trusted. And then it will always be this. It will get better each time because the more you realize he will never leave you nor forsake you to the end of the age. And the more you see that, that no matter what, he will see you through. Has God ever left you? Has God ever, in many respects, not come through? On your time frame, absolutely. Because he should be doing stuff, you know, quickly. But he doesn't do that because he loves us. Because if you spoon-fed your child until they were 10, you know, you're not, you're not helping. There's times where you feed yourself. There's times where you draw from the word. There's times where he he will put you in places where I've got to read the owner's manual and it's right here. And that's where all of a sudden this thing that you had read so many times now lit right up. Why? Because that's exactly what you needed. And it empowered you, strengthened you, healed you, gave you peace. All in one big could be one chapter, one sentence, or one word. His word is powerful. Our number one duty, 
our number one role in it all, in any way, in any way for any of this to work, because we went through the roles. And here's the thing. This is what I'm camping on today, is this. Our duty to pray. Our role as a prayer warrior. Our role as a Christian. Our responsibility to pray. And Jesus set such a standard for us. There was nothing he didn't do without praying. He came here and limited himself, emptied himself in everything he did. Because he was fully man. He prayed and waited on God to speak to him and to lead him. I mean, we don't, he did that. His limitation was his limitation, and he did that. He's familiar with us because he looked out to the world and at the world just like we do. He experienced and felt hunger, cold, betrayal, thirst, pain. In all the aspects of life, So our number one duty, our number one role is the duty to pray. His example of prayer, his example of what he did is in, in every way a template for me and a template for you. Everything he did, he did it heartily for the glory of God. Chapter 4 verse 2 says this, continually earnestly in prayer being vigilant in it with thanksgiving, meanwhile praying also for us that we would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, which I am in chains, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. We have this. Seeing Paul has made his case. Paul has set the standard of duty, of job description in the last chapter, and he's telling us it can't be done without fulfilling this role that will never change as a believer, the duty of prayer. And here is where the fire is kept burning because of prayer. It's where it keeps going because of prayer. Without prayer, nothing will work. We have had days, weeks, a long time. If you just be honest with yourself. I pray for meals quickly because I'm hungry. We've seen what that looks like but we realize and sometimes it's the biggest uh, the the biggest revelation it's like wow i've been a christian for 20 years prayer works prayer is key to it all prayer gives us discernment Prayer gives us the ability to do better. It's the key to have strength. Without prayer, I can't forgive. Without prayer, I can't let go of stuff that's been holding on to me for so long. Without prayer, I can't let go of things. And sometimes without prayer, I can't hang on. Without prayer, I can't resist sin. And without prayer, I can't forgive other people's sins against me. Without prayer, I won't have wisdom, can't have wisdom. And without prayer, 
I can't have the faith of a child. Without prayer, I can't receive mercy from God. And without prayer, I can't extend mercy to others. You get the point. Prayer is key. It's key to everything. It's key to it all. It's honest communication with the Lord. And we are to continue steadfastly in prayer in order to fulfill our responsibility to reach a world that's lost. In order for us to fulfill our responsibility and our duties and our roles that God places us throughout our lifetime. Continue steadfastly in prayer. Here's what, it never works as a legalistic must do, have to, or God will hate you. It doesn't work that way. Because I have tried it many times. Me and God made a pact that I'm going to be at this certain place at five every morning because I'm serious about it. And I made the whole thing and it lasted because I'm like, maybe a month. One of them lasted a, a week. How many times we made the thing that I have to do this. But the thing is, I get to do this. I want to do this. Because you realize that's defeatism. It's the fact of, of when, when you get in the presence of the Lord. It is a process of want to. It's a process of, of I get to because I know that I need to because of prayer I can walk away with such freedom. Because God will let us make all those promises. But he won't hold it over our heads and say, look, because I know in and of myself, I can have the wherewithal, all the soulless realm, without praying about God giving me strength. To, yeah. I mean, it's a funny circle. But when you realize I need to get in his presence, and when you have done this and, and you get away from it, you're like, I, I miss him. I miss him. I miss fellowship with him. I miss praying to him. Because I've learned this. I have learned how prayer changes me. How in prayer I experience forgiveness because of prayer the peace that surpasses all understanding the circumstances haven't changed but i've wholeheartedly heartily gave it to him and he did something that never made sense never does make sense he gave me peace it's okay circumstances did not change when I got done praying. But yet I had peace. Because God took it over. All our fears. All of our projections. Of all those different things. You're going to see it as you give it to God. He will give you peace. Without prayer I'm. With prayer I'm able to forgive. It's so amazing how serious, heartedly praying changes us. Because I can have peace because I simply gave it to him. Steadfastly means this. Longer than five minutes. <laughs> five minutes can go take a long time. <laughs> And then you've got all these thoughts. If you've got your phone and it keeps dinging, I mean, God will understand. Do you think the enemy wants you to stick it out in prayer? Do you think the enemy wants you to obtain peace, to obtain trust, to obtain growth because of prayer? No. The fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. 
I can't get fervency in prayer without experiencing the result of prayer. And our fervency grows. I can't stay lit up for the Lord just by reading my Bible. That is an ingredient combined with prayer. Gives me such, such ability to pray. It's all of this. One doesn't work without the other. Growth doesn't happen without all of these things coming into play. And it is the long game. Steadfastly means earnestly and attentive to the minute details of form and action and conduct. And it's also this. Prayer is a two-way conversation. Listen. Listen. Listen, God will speak to you. Now we want, thus saith the Lord, buy that piece of property and grow rich. I'll bless you. <laughs> That's right. And he can do that. But a lot of times it's that still soft voice that you know what's okay. I hope I didn't make him cry. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it is that revelation, that thought that comes from God. I never thought of it that way. I'm to blame, not them. I need to go make it right. It's that thing of like, I operated in fear. I reacted in fear because I was fearful. God tells you these things. He can wake you up, up sometimes in the stillness of the night got the answer it's so amazing how he in every way meets us right where we're at so that he can put into us exactly what we need I have learned how prayer changes me and when I'm aware of his presence in prayer I can experience forgiveness and able to forgive and as I'm steadfast, and as I'm, I, in many ways, let God talk to me also. And just be still. And be familiar with the presence of the Lord. It's nothing all crazy. It is like, it's like. All I can think of was when I was a little boy. In church, because I had to go, and, 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 and my mom wouldn't let me sleep, you know. <laughs> anyway, my grandma would. It was that thing of laying my head on her shoulders and, <laughs> and just feeling at peace. The presence, just the stuff of, of just the peace, the acceptance, the I'm home, I'm in the presence of God. I am in so many respects right where I need to be. And God heals and nurtures and ministers, sometimes convicts in a gentle way sometimes. He'll show us the inconsistencies of our life in a way that we can respond to. We don't have to beat ourselves up because you made a promise to God and failed it miserably. Because if your kids have made a promise to you that they will clean the kitchen, you know, and you walk in and in their mind, like, they're happy, like, look. And you're like, no, that's not even close to my standard. No, you're like, good job on the thing, but the dusting, in, the, you broke some dishes? No, I mean, you know what? The Father heart of God Trust in it. Let God talk to you in this conversation called prayer. He can, 
And he will if you just let him. Then it says this. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. That in the end of itself is the end product of consistent prayer. Thankful in all things. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and repetition, let your prayers be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. How do I be anxious for nothing? I really believe that that's a process. It's the end product of consistent prayer. Thankful in all things. Knowing because of the revelation of consistent prayer, God is always at work. The ups and downs of life, the valleys and the mountaintops, and the daily, all of those things, you're going to see that God is faithful. God is consistent. God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's always at work. Did you know God doesn't sleep? <laughs> By prayer. Thanksgiving is this thing is terrible. There's no good in this. How can I be thankful for it? And I've shared this many times. Because I've experienced many times. We've all been through the valley of the shadow of death. We've all been through dark times, hard times, painful times, broken times. And you can walk out of that valley with a big hunk that you'll always remember where you got it. And it will carry you through other valleys. You'll remember that God was faithful there. You remember that everything was, this is bad. And God carried you. And how he carried you. And how he met you. How he put somebody in your path to encourage all of the ingredients. Is God showing you, be thankful in all things. Because no, nothing, nothing we go through. If we do the math. If we just lift it up to him. We will one day see the wisdom of it. And I have seen the wisdom of it. And some of the things is like still baffle me. I don't know. But I'm going to trust. You just know. You learn. That is that whole aspect. Verse 3 says this. And meanwhile, while praying for us. I'll just go through two. Uh, earnestly Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in chains. Meanwhile, I love this. Praying for us also. Do you see this half sentence? It's a half sentence, kind of thrown in there. Paul is in prison, and he's in chains. And he's lovingly instructing this letter and, and, and this church, a church that he's even never been to. And there's room for pause here just for this, just for a minute, if you bear with me. Paul knows the power of prayer. He also knows that he's a target. You think? He totally knows he's in chains. And he's asking for opportunity to be used by God with his chains attached. Despite the chains, how would you do? How would you do? How would you handle that? Would you be singing praises? The uttermost parts of the dungeon like he did in Philippi to God and that prisoners were listening. This is not 
Paul's first barbecue. To be used by God despite the change. I love the maturity in this sentence. You ever have those times in prayer where God timely answers something that seems so impossible? Comes to Christ because you've been praying for them for decades? Someone comes to Christ because you just prayed for them yesterday? God can do that. Or God has answered your prayer and healed you? God has ministered to you in, in emotional aspects and emotional ways and given you the ability to forgive. God can be in the middle of reconciliation. It seems that could never happen, but it does because this, this, and this equals um, impossible. But with God all... He'll do that so that you just do the math as that was totally God. Where God gave you a job, where God changed your, your, your whole deal. The more we pray, the more God hears. And we also know this as we delight ourselves in the Lord, as we grow accustomed to who He is and what He's all about and how He will carry us. And, and, and change us and encourage us and lead us. Our prayers will follow in line with his character. Because he's changing our character. It will be less of self and more of God. How can I be used by you? And help me to be a better man. Help me to be a better husband. Help me to be a better friend. Fill in all the blanks. The more we delight ourselves in him, the more our prayers will reflect it. God, I don't want to have any problems. I want to go to work and come home, and I want to make a lot of money, and I want a lot of things. God can bless you. But God always has a big work to do in our hearts. We're all made of the same stuff. Praying for all of us. Paul's prison time. All of Paul's beatings. All of Paul's betrayal. His exile. His shipwrecks. His earthquakes. His detainment by the Holy Spirit where he feels he's going to lead there, but the Holy Spirit detains him. Paul's patience. Paul's self-control. Paul's love. All of these things determine our prayer content. When you go through that, what are you going to walk away with? Pray for me while I'm in chains so that I can reach these people that are chained next to me. That I can have the strength to be, in many respects, asked by a Roman guard. What's up with you, Paul? Then he says, pray for me also. This is here for a reason. Meanwhile, praying also for us. <clears throat> Meanwhile, continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant with it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak. Can leadership have a meanwhile in your prayer life? If you know the rage of the enemy, if you know that meanwhile can really make a huge difference in a pastor's life, Front lines are challenging. 
Meanwhile, pray for us that we not get locked in this or that, that we can still go forward in chains and share Christ with those who are have the key to our chains. Meanwhile, can we love them? Meanwhile, can we stay mission-minded? We have an opportunity in juvenile detention to, to get in there and, and deal with young men and young women. It's coming into play. Meanwhile, an expansion of ministry under times, knowing that all believers who dare to pray, that all believers that dare to go further with the Lord, that all believers who dare to, to play out their biblically defined roles of life are going to be attacked. Satan is out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. When you make progress in your Christian life and in your Christian walk, what's going to happen? All those words, kill, steal, and destroy, do not really need a Greek meaning. They're pretty much straight up what they are. The enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy from you. It's serious business, this thing called growing in Christ. It's serious business, this thing called making an impact in the world out there for his glory. And Paul also asked for an open door. So that the mystery of Christ may be made manifest, may be made known, the visible realized through an apologetic, through a conversation. Because ministry 101 is always you and me. He's just praying. Meanwhile, you guys, <laughs> pray for me. I'm in chains. He's not mentioning anything else. But he's saying this. God hears the prayers of each of us. God moves mountains. God moves hearts. God moves our heart. He moves our soul. He moves us around. And he hears our prayers. How amazing when you see the lights go on. When you see hungry eyes being told a long hidden truth and when it goes from the head to the heart and you see it. When you see their eyes wide open, having no hope, and finally hearing the gospel presented. This is where it's at. The very heart and the realm of the soul being touched because of God's word. That's living. That's what, what it's about. And you've got to realize, every one of you guys are here because somebody, somewhere, or a group of somebodies somewhere told you something that struck a chord, that struck a question mark. Is this all there is? That struck an answer to the vacuum of your heart. Meanwhile, praying for us that God would open to us a door for the word to, be, to, to speak, for the word to speak, the mystery of Christ, which I'm in change, that I may make manifest as I ought to speak. It's good to be used by God. And he says, as I ought to speak. And this is Paul's closing chapter in his amazing life. There's so much here in this one half sentence. A minor mention of his change, but capital letters of the battle is won by prayer. The battle is won by prayer. The content and the intent 
achieved not by accident, but by divine appointment because of prayer. The content of your prayer, the intent of your prayer, which means you know what you're up against. You have some seasoning in your prayer life. And it's not an accident when God makes divine appointments. When he puts people in front of you now. That you never thought you would be that person. No idea the simplicity of just stopping and giving somebody a time of day. Because God's prompted you to do so. Because you are familiar now with his leading. And your availability to be led. A direct result of prayer. Sometimes you've not even realized it when it's right in front of you. God, it's going to be used by you so much. And there's that person. And when you walk away, you're like, wait a minute. I just got used. And it came so natural. It came so so organic. It's same, it was just, there's nothing like it. Walk in wisdom, verse 5, toward those who are outside, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. It means this doing well, doing good, as it is the purchase money by which we make the time of our own action. Redeeming the time is investment. Sometimes redeeming the time is investment is somebody that, like your neighbor, or redeeming the time is investment. As you put this stuff into play, you are, it's going to pay out. And the fact that they're going to listen to you. Because you always have an end game. I have a burden for the un, unsaved. Sometimes it takes strategy how to put in this amazing message of the gospel. Sometimes it's like, boom, just here you go, and they're ready. Other times it's like, I've been burned so many times, I don't trust anybody. And you can see it in their demeanor. You can see it in all these different things. Show them what a real Christian looks like instead of the guy that, that, that says all these things and is, lives a contrary life and gives every a reason not to ever go into church. If all Christians are like you, why would I want to be a Christian? Stay consistent. It's the long game. You can, you can work and, and be an example for 20 years and it will pay out. And here's the thing. The payout is not anything that, that, I, can, that I can touch and feel and carry around. It's a soul finding Jesus Christ. It's a life change, a family change, a, a whole community change. It says for us to walk in wisdom. Now, remember when you were 15, 16? <laughs> Let's forget that. <laughs> How smart were you? Ask me. I'd have told you. I got it down. You know. I will. But you know, walk in wisdom towards outsiders. That's important. To walk with wisdom towards outsiders. Yeah, there's culture out there. There's income brackets. There's where you're from. There's where you come from. Here's where you're going. But there's a world to reach, and everybody has a backstory. There's generational gaps. I'll give you that. Yeah, there sure is. But the goal is this, for whoever you are as a believer, is to win them for Christ. To win them for Christ. As you do it heartily, because they know you're real. You're doing it because you're real and you want to give glory to God. You're doing it because you care. Because they see that you do love them and you give them a time of day. And you hear what they have to say. Because you're concerned and you care. Win them for Christ. Never forget where you came from. And never forget how far God has taken you. It keeps us humble. 
keeps our feet on the ground. Know that that whole part how far God's taken, know that no matter the person that's in front of you, here's the basic need, the basic question. The whole thing is this. An unsaved person is looking for meaning, an unsaved person will chase down so many of you. Just pick your vice. We could go down nine other things, a hundred other things. Pick it. Riches. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. P- pick your this self-destructive device. You know, because one is, they all lead the same way. You will not be fulfilled without a relationship with Christ. We are all born with eternity in our hearts. We are all born believing in God. And we're all born with that conscience that God has put there. No matter how hard you want to fight it, no matter how hard you want to deny it, you know right, you know wrong, you know all these things. If you want to numb feeling guilty because, yeah, fill in it all. But here's the end of the day. When you've done it all, we have. We have the answer to it all. The born-again experience. That as you let Christ come into your life and change your heart and give Him you, therein lies the change. Therein lies the, the new beginning. Therein lies the next generation that steps forward for Jesus Christ to carry that torch. Know where you came from. Know how far God has taken you. Know that there is that whole aspect to give a reason for the hope that lies within. And prayer brings it all about. There's competition for the men. Oh, really? That's a de- devastating statement. There's competition for the minds of men. Let me Google that and see what the. Okay, no, never mind. Okay, I don't mind. Okay. There's competition for the minds of our youth. For the minds of our small ones. You guys, we're at war. Let your speech always be with God, with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one. I can't have grace without experiencing grace. Prayer brings it all about. Let your speech. Again, this is the thing. I can let my speech. As an unsaved person, I was a good cursor. (laughs) I had no control over. Got me in a lot of trouble. Once I became a believer, God's given me the ability to curb my tongue. He's given me the ability to care about what I say. He's given me the ability as a believer to let my speech, because none of us have arrived where we're so stereo smooth it's not even funny. But let your speech always be with grace. And I hope that as we realize God's given us more grace and our speech is reflective of that. God has given us less mind, less, less uh, uh, aspect of speaking our mind and hurting people's feelings when being careful about what we say. And having our, our speech always be with grace. Grace is this, that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, Sweetness, charm, loveliness, grace of speech. Prayer brings that about. Different things. Everybody says, you know what this needs? Lots of pepper. No. (laughs) 
salt. That's it. It needs more salt. You know? And it's amazing how, you know, oh, last with the gospel your ability all these things it's salty it it is attractive imagine hearing example he set before us dwell on this just a bit is my how many times has that been an answer something salt Challenges the senses, wakes up the senses. Our message of the gospel, seasoned with salt, wakes people up. Our message and our example that we set, and it's, it's, it's people, when people see real, they want what we have. That they may know that you have the answer. Because that is the whole thing. Do we have the answer? Yes, we do. We know all of these things. Let your speech be seasoned with salt. Let your speech have grace. And how, how about this? Experience tells us. Experience shows us. The more you respond to those you have been praying for in a general way the Lord will answer that prayer Lord use me he will use you and the more that, that as he sends them and you serve them he's going to send you more and you're going to recognize it it's like where were all these people before? God is preparing you, making you, putting you in a place where you can be effective because you have applied all these things in your life. And you did it because you want to do it heartily for the glory of God. And when he sends someone your way that needs grace and it needs a presentation of who you are and why you who you are, that's seasoned with salt. That's the perfect ingredient for Christian growth. All right, we are close to quitting time here. How about this? Have you ever lately visited your troubleshooting manual <laughs> chapter? Now, if, you, if there's a few things that, you know, the Word has brought forward, you know, because here it is, it is an owner's manual. And he's the owner. The reason he's the owner is because you have given him that role. And the reason you care is because he has put this love in your heart. So, you know, that's just one thing. And how... You ought to answer is another of the hope that lies within. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the challenges of your word. Worship team, come up here, please. And Lord, we just uh, ask God that is, there are areas in our lives and there are 
areas, Lord God, where we just lay at your feet. Lord, we all want to serve you in a capacity that's past us. Lord, we all want to realize that as we come here and we all know, God, that we need you in such a degree, in such a way. So, Father, we just ask that you continue to give us grace in our conversation, that you give us a heart towards the lost, that we pray for those that, Lord, you lay upon our heart. That, Lord, we step out of our comfort zone and say something that we may think is risky. But, Lord, how can it be risky when our objective is their salvation? When our objective is to bring comfort to a world that needs it? And, Lord, give us the power and the strength to be the light, to be the salt. Give us the ability to discern, Lord God. And help us, Father, to continue to give you opportunity to change our hearts. Keep us humble, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're ever faithful for us and to us. And so, Father, as we go from here, as we take in what you have spoken to us, as we research our owner's manual, Lord God, let us do whatever we do heartily unto you. Let us, Lord God, know that in every way, you who orchestrates our lives, Teach us to hear from you more. Teach us that, that precious time of prayer and your presence. And Lord, I just pray for tonight as we do gather in worship and prayer, Lord God, that you be in our midst, that your presence will be evident to all. That, Lord, we give you, we give you access. And that, Lord, we can hear from you as a church, Lord. So, Father, we know that all of these roles that you've called us, all of these responsibilities that we are in this world a part of, let us do it for the, your glory. Let us do it from the best of our ability. Let us be the light and the salt that the world can see. And we thank you, God. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you guys need prayer, we have it available um, in this corner. Do you feel the world is broken? Do. Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? We do. And do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. And is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? It is. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah who conquered the grave for oh, he is david's root and the lamb who died to ransom the slave is he worthy is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory is he worthy Yes. 
Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does the Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. And does our God intend to dwell again with us? He does. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. Oh, he is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave from every people and tribe. Every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom of priests to God to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Is he worthy, is he worthy of this? He is, he is, he is, he is. Blessing and honor and glory, he is worthy of this. He is. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised and lifted up. We exalt your holy name and praise you throughout all our days. I ask that as we go from this place to wherever, wherever we go next, that you be with us, give us strength, strength to endure, strength to uh, take our stand against the attacks of the enemy. And we, uh, we thank you for all that you do, all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>